It's quite a unique time in our history um, as a society and as a world. I think we all know that we face huge dangers, economic dangers, environmental dangers, dangers of war and peace, global security, um, whether people are thinking of terrorism or people are thinking of the threats that come from climate change and how they're affecting our world. It's an unprecedentedly difficult time, but it also means that we have unprecedented opportunities to make real change, to build a better society, and to build the kind of world that we know we can have. We saw that people in this country were sick and tired of how things were. Uh, the election of Barack Obama, although not fundamentally changing the nature of our society, was a sign that people really want something different. It's a first step. It's an opening for organizers, for activists, for regular people to start to make those changes. And we know the kinds of changes people want. We know that everybody has a right to have a home. Everyone has a right to have a decent standard of living and education proper, healthy food, and that the big banks in Wall Street don't deserve all the money they're getting while people are struggling for jobs. We're in a jobless recovery, and yet huge banks have been given trillions of dollars. As I heard someone say on the radio tonight, we've paid enough to nationalize all the banks, but what's happened is we've nationalized the risk, and they're making all the profits. So we know what the problems are. And what we've seen is that people generally in this society agree on the solutions. Single payer. 70% of people, by many surveys, believe we should have a single payer system. But it's not on the national agenda if you look at what Congress and the President are talking about. Everybody believes that education should be better. But almost no one believes that no child left behind is helping or that paying $30,000, $50,000 a year for college is really getting you your money's worth even though it's necessary for people to go to college in many cases. And we know that these wars we've been fighting, this new escalation in Afghanistan, is not making us safer. It's not making the world more peaceful. It's not helping the people of Afghanistan. So most people in this society agree that serious change, perhaps radical change, is needed to make our society, and again, the whole world, the kind of place that we need it to be. So, in that spirit, we're here as, in Pittsburgh, the G20 nations are meeting. Now, I, I'm afraid to ask how many know what the G20 is. I mean, I'm sure everyone's heard of it. And there are lots of websites, lots of information. But think of it this way. The most powerful leaders in the world, backed by corporate interests, by big business, and by big money, are all meeting to figure out how do we effectively manage the world in this time of crisis. And, I think all of us want the crisis to end, but I'm not sure if those are the people that those of us in this room want to be figuring out how to manage that crisis. So we're here tonight to speak back, talk back to the G20, to express our voices, to hear some possible solutions, and to talk about how we can work together for collective action to make some real changes. Um, there are a number of groups that help bring people together tonight, and I don't know if I have them all here, so if I miss somebody, um, please forgive me. But we definitely want to thank the student groups at Northeastern, especially the student chapter um, of the National Lawyers Guild here at Northeastern and the Progressive Student Association for making this possible. Jobs with Justice, City Life, the Majority Agenda Project all played important roles in bringing people here tonight. So uh, let's, please give a hand for all those groups. <laughs> Tonight, let's begin in Boston with part of our Global Week of Action in response to the G20. The Week of Action is going to conclude next Thursday with a march, and there will be more details available. There are a lot of materials outside if you haven't seen them. And there's a lot that people can do. It really makes a difference for people to get out of the streets. Thousands of people were in Pittsburgh today having a peaceful protest, so you might not hear about it as much. But we have to be out in the streets and make sure people in the media, but also people right here in Boston, know that people care. And I just ask you all to think, try to think a little bit differently. As you listen to what people say tonight, think about what you're hearing, what it means to you, how it resonates with your own experience, 
And so then when we have a chance for more dialogue and discussion, uh, we're really hoping that people can get outside the box a little bit and think of some new solutions and look at things in new ways.